This video uses the vendor presets of Digitalis and Daven. You can download it from the internet page Digitalis and Daven. And it just starts with my presets, uh, the standard mental way vendor presets. I just choose it uh, if you don't have my basic scene and then I go into environment vendor and uh, choose all my settings. I actually want to load, I go into load and here we go. We will learn how to use artificial light in 3D Studio Max with Mendelway and we just start with our daylight scene from our video daylight system in 3D Studio Max and we have our daylight, daylight system. I can just uh, open my, um, my light lister and uh, what I want to do is I just want to use my artificial light without any daylight which is sometimes quite good. It's easier to control and you also save a little bit of wonder time. I'll just switch my sky uh, light off and I also switch my sunlight off and if I uh, go into my visualization then you can see that there is still a little bit of something uh, happening and what you actually have to do is you go into your environment environment exposure control and you have to switch off your um, your environment map. You can still see that there is still a little bit of light ha happening and if you just uncheck use map uh, from your uh, environment uh, uh, map and go into preview then you can see that everything is off and uh, you don't have any light in your scene uh, anymore. Okay, I just hide my daylight system uh, and uh, just remember, really important uh, if you hide the daylight system and your compass, it's not switched off. You have to switch it off in your light lister or in your uh, lighting, uh, lighting settings. Okay, if I go into create and uh, light, we can see we have target lights, we have free lights. There's not a big difference because uh, when I go into my free light and I just enter a free light in my scene and I just move it uh, up to my, um, uh, to my ceiling, uh, then we can go into my uh, modify panel and we see that out of uh, a light like this I can also um, make a target light. If I just uh, click on target light you can see that I have my target point. I can move my target point. So that's the first thing. Uh, the difference between target light and uh, free light uh, is not big because anyhow in your settings you can um, uh, you can uh, change from target to uh, free light. I really like working with target lights, especially if I use spotlights. But uh, light I can switch on and off here and obviously uh, of course also in my uh, light lister. That's, uh, that's the same. I can switch it uh, on and, uh, and off. I always have to refresh uh, my light lister if I work with my light lister. So if I switch it uh, off here then I have to go into a uh, refresh and then you can also see that also my light lister is, uh, uh, is refreshed. Okay, let's now have a look at the details of our light. The first thing is we have templates and this is a little bit like a DIY shop. You can choose between uh, light bulbs. I just uh, increase a little bit the exposure so we can see it uh, a little bit uh, better. So we have um, normal light bulbs and uh, we have uh, halogen lights, we have uh, uh, recessed lights and uh, you can always see that all these uh, um, uh, templates have a completely influence of all the other settings underneath. So that's the first thing you can work with these templates and uh, just shortcut all the other settings you normally have to do. The first thing we want to look at is uh, just a really normal uh, light bulb and uh, I just choose my uh, uh, light bulb and if I go up we just go through the settings. You should never do anything in terms of shadows, always go into ray trace shadows if you are not experienced and if I have a light bulb then it automatically goes into uniform spherical. This means the light goes uh, uh, around my uh, sphere um, completely uh, equal. And uh, what we should do is we should first look at our uh, uh, temperature, our uh, temperature in terms of our color temperature in terms of Kelvin. And a normal light bulb bulb has a color temperature of 2,800 Kelvin. If I look into my environment map, 
then uh, we already changed my exposure to a lower uh, volume because otherwise uh, we increase our exposure. You know, the smaller the number, the more light, uh, the higher the exposure actually. And uh, if I want to have a scene which is not uh, yellow like this, obviously you should um, also adjust uh, the white point of my camera if I have the same uh, same color temperature and my scene in my 3D scene like my light bulb then we can see that it's again quite neutral. I don't want this, I want to have a little bit like this uh, uh, natural um, yellowish look of my light bulb, probably not extreme, as extreme like 6500 uh, 6, Kelvin which is more like a daylight setting. I go into 5000 Kelvin and this is already quite good. So what you can do is you can uh, adjust the, um, the Kelvin, which is uh, with a normal light bulb around 2,600 uh, and 3,500 uh, uh, Kelvin. You can add a filter on top, uh, for example, like, uh, like in a theater, which we don't want to do right now. Uh, you can also say this is my light bulb and I want to uh, freeze my light bulb and I want to use it like a, like a dimmer, like in the real world. I say this is my light bulb and I just want to go to 100% and I can just lower it and I can increase it. But um, uh, this is just something which is uh, more or less uh, interesting for animations. Okay, uh, far attenuation, uh, we are not really interested in this right now. What you can do on top is you can change, um, uh, you can change the uh, the shape. Here you can see my first uh, visualization with um, um, an exposure of 4 and uh, a white point of uh, 5000 Kelvin. That's why it's still a little bit yellowish, but this is uh, fine to me. And if I just choose my light bulb, I can, uh, for example, just say that I want to have something uh, uh, linear, a little bit uh, like a fluorescent tube and we just look at this again in my visualization and the biggest difference is uh, already uh, the shadow the point light has a really clear shadow and with my uh, fluorescent tube you can already see that it's more like a diffuse uh, shadow like in real life okay let's have a look at the other shapes uh, for example this is quite good you can have something like an area light if I just turn my light a little bit you can already see what this uh, looks like and this is quite handy also if you just build up something like uh, a photo studio and uh, let's have a look okay here again we see it in my visualization we can see it works uh, really well we have a completely diffuse uh, light situation which gives a nice impression and it's also like that we have a two-dimensional surface and with this we can use something like a uh, light shape visible in render and we just move it a little bit so we can also look underneath which is important right now and we, we look at this, this again in my next visualization okay here we go this is uh, my uh, rectangle and you can see just because i used light shape visible in window we can do the same thing for example with a disc i just uh, increase a little bit the radius of a disc Okay, here can, you can see it with the disk again, with light shape visible and rendering. You can see it with uh, the sphere, which could be uh, a nice light bulb, but then you should definitely go for a smaller, smaller radius like 3 centimeters. That's definitely too big for a light bulb. Or you just go into uh, your uh, cylinder and just say that's a fluorescent tube. Uh, if you choose the right uh, radius, then you can also do this one. With the area light, I would like to show you one more thing. Uh, I just work with uniform uh, spherical, so it just uh, is completely homogeneous in uh, all directions, like 360 degrees. If I go into uniform diffuse, you can already see what hap what's happening with my symbol. It just only goes to one side. And this is what it looks like if you render this picture. It's slightly darker if you increase uh, uh, the exposure then it looks like this. It only goes into one direction and not the, into the other direction and that's definitely really helpful for example if you work with area lights to control your scene a little bit better and that it doesn't go uh, uh, to the back of your area light. 
Before we finish uh, looking at my uh, uniform diffuse light distribution, we just um, uh, go back and just choose uh, a normal sphere like a light bulb and say radius of 3 centimeters and uh, we just copy paste this light just move it to, uh, to this side and I just want to have three lights I just hold my shift and uh, I enter a number of copies three means I want to add uh, two uh, two instances so I now have three three light I move them a little bit to the middle and if I go into my uh, light list I go into lighting cameras and I have my light lister then you can see that I only have one photometric light because I have th uh, copied this as an instance which is also really handy because you save a little bit of rendering times and obviously if I just um, uh, take my light I can uh, uh, adjust it, I can uh, change my uh, color temperature for example if I go and just change the color temperature of my light bulb to 3500 which is more like a cold uh, coldish light bulb then I go into my render preview and we see it already looks different it's probably now slightly too bright I just uh, lower it a little bit and this is what it looks like if I have three light bulbs and I have uh, visible and rendering and I, when I changed my uh, uh, KVN from 2800 to 3500 uh, KVN and if I just go again into my exposure control and I just enter 3500 KVN uh, also in my, uh, in my uh, exposure control then it just doesn't look like uh, normal light bulbs anymore because uh, I adjusted the uh, white point of my environment and effects menu to uh, the Kelvin color um, color temperature of my light bulbs which is now here the same. I also changed um, my mapping in my background, uh, my wallpaper mapping to flat because I had a lot of weird reflections uh, here at my background. This rendering on my computer took uh, 46 uh, seconds. Uh, that's not much, but it's also a really simple scene. If you have a lot of uh, light bulbs or a lot of lights uh, in, your, in your scene, you probably uh, choose a different uh, render settings. Uh, if I go into my common and into my presets, I can just load my um, when the presets uh, higher for much artificial light with uh, mental way and uh, with this you can uh, increase your uh, your render time uh, a little bit and we just see what this looks like and just go into effects uh, render nvidia global illumination and uh, processing i don't choose environment i don't choose common because i don't want to change these and uh, let's see how long this will take. In terms of uh, 40 sec uh, 46 seconds it took uh, 43 seconds. This doesn't look like a big improvement but it's also like this that this scene is really simple. So if you have a really complex scene with a lot of complex materials then just try these settings and uh, uh, you can definitely uh, save some, uh, some minutes. You just have to try, uh, try a little bit. Okay, next, next step I want to look at my light distribution tube uh, type um, spotlight and the interesting thing is I just go into light distribution type and I can't choose it anymore. There's a reason for this and some of this could happen to you. If you for example have different kinds of emit lights from shapes and for example you have this sphere then uh, there is a limit of uh, the distribution types you can choose. What I have to do is if this happens to do just go to point again and if you go to point then you again have your polar muni like photometric web and spotlight which we actually want to use right now and uh, I also want to do one other thing I go again into my light luster I go into lighting cameras and um, then into my uh, light luster you can't see this menu unfortunately because of my uh, uh, video tutorial I just choose light luster and um, I um, switch these uh, lights off and you can just see that these lights are actually off because when you uncheck my top view then you can just see that these lights are black and there's no light anymore in my scene. 
Okay, let's go to Kuwait and again to uh, photometric uh, light. It's important that you only use photometric lights. I don't use any standard lights in my scene with mental ray. And I, I go into target and I just draw a target light here in my scene again. And uh, now to uh, do something like um, uh, like a spotlight, I go into light distribution and a uniform circle. I swap to spotlight. If you do this, all the settings are the same like my um, like my settings with my uniform circle, a little bit like my light bulb settings. So what I do is in intensity color, I don't want this D65 uh, illuminated. This is uh, like the completely normal uh, daylight settings. What I want to use is uh, I just go into um, I just uh, switch it off. By the way, it, this is also like that you can choose different kind of uh, settings. I'm more into uh, choosing color temperature, so I just go again into a color temperature of 2700 uh, Kelvin, which is more like a warm light. And uh, yeah, let's play a little bit with my spotlight settings. The first thing you obviously here should do is just take the target point and just move the target point in my front view and in my top view to uh, to my objects, uh, so I can really illuminate uh, uh, something. And we can already see the color temperature now of 2700 Kelvin because uh, in my environment and effects uh, exposure control. I have a wide point of uh, 5000 uh, Kelvin. If I just go to uh, 2700, then it uh, looks completely neutral again. And I just go to something like 4000 uh, Kelvin and as a wide point like 4000, which is actually uh, fine. Uh, okay, what you can do is uh, with my spotlights, you see um, that there is um, something like uh, extra field for my spotlight settings. And there's a hotspot. And there's a fall off, and the hot spot right now is 30 centimeters. That's the inner circle, and in the circle you have a light intensity of 100 percent. Your fall off is um, the fade between the hot spot and uh, zero, and uh, so you can see that I can increase my fall off. You can see it uh, also in my top view, and this means that you have. Uh, a less sharp uh, hot, um, spotlight, and if uh, the fall off of my spotlight and my hotspot is more or less the same, then uh, it's a little bit like in a the theater, then you have a really uh, sharp uh, spotlight. We just have a look at this in one visualization. Okay, I go into my window preview, and we see what this actually looks like. I increase it a little bit. I go into uh, exposure value 3 and uh, start my visualization right now. On the left side you see a visualization where hotspot and fall off is more or less quite similar. And uh, on the right side you just see a visualization where the fall off is much bigger than the hotspot and this is more like a diffuse, uh, uh, diffuse uh, spotlight. All the other settings are a little bit like my uh, spherical lights and all the other lights. So if you go through this, don't change uh, shadows if you have no experience with this. And um, you can put a filter in front of your uh, light if you want to. Uh, we work with uh, candela, so this is our light intensity. If I do have a different uh, bulb inside, I can increase uh, the candela. And uh, obviously, then we have uh, a more intense uh, uh, light in our scene. I can also freeze this candle and just say I want to go into dim. And this means uh, this uh, kind of light bulb is uh, set, and we just can uh, work th with a percentage, which uh, sometimes makes sense, especially uh, in, um, in animations. And uh, fire attenuation is not really important to us. What you can do, which is also quite handy, if you instead of uh, uh, instead of uh, using uh, the point setting in shape area, you go into uh, a disk, and then on top probably also in light shape visible in rendering, you can do something like this: that you have your visualization, and you can see 
uh, uh, something like uh, like a disk uh, for uh, the representative of uh, of our spotlight, which is really handy when you work with visualizations. There's another t uh, light uh, distribution type which makes your scene really realistic. If you go into light distribution and go into a photomatic web, then you can choose photomatic web files. And we just go to my internet page, uh, Digitales in Waffen, and uh, here you can also uh, load um, a set of uh, ES files, and you can see these um, uh, these uh, different kind of uh, shapes, uh, which I um, which you can just uh, load as file in your 3D uh, 3ds Max program. I download uh, my uh, my zip file. And here we go. I just go right mouse click and extract all. And these files you can already then open in 3D Studio uh, Max. Uh, there's one thing which is probably quite handy if you just copy these files and you just go into your own documents and then into 3D Studio Max and next scene into scene assets and photomatic web and you can see that this folder is empty if you just copy them inside here then you always have them and this is also the default uh, folder for my ES file and we can just have a look at this right now I go into my light distribution uh, photomatic web and here I can just choose one of these different uh, settings for example I want to have these kind of uh, light number 18 I just choose uh, my ES file number 18. We can just already see uh, my preview window. And if I go into uh, rendering, we just compare two different kind of ES files right now. What you can see on the left side is uh, light distribution number three. It's uh, actually this one. What you can see on uh, this uh, rendering is my light distribution method number 10. It's a little bit more, it's a little bit more wider. And what you can see on this picture is uh, light distribution method number 18. So there is a huge difference between these uh, uh, renderings. And the only thing I just changed, I chose a different kind of ES files for my uh, for my lights. Some companies, for example, like Arco, uh, even offer something like um, uh, files for 3D Studio Max. And uh, we just go into their um, uh, data data download, and you just see that there are downloads for different kind of programs, and also for Autodesk Max uh, Max, and these are iDrop files. And we just look at one uh, example. I just choose uh, one of these uh, lights, for example, like this uh, cylinder light. I just download this light now again. And uh, I go into my download, and uh, this is my download file. I just extract my download file. Here we go, and these are my IDOP file in the 3D Studio Max uh, format. Okay, let's uh, import this. I go into import and then obviously into merge and I already went to my download file. I can choose one of these different kind of uh, lights, for example this one. And I want to uh, import this group, which I do right now. Uh, it's done with an old format, so there's this warning that this is uh, there are probably some issues. For example, one issue is that it doesn't have uh, uh, mental ray materials, which I should probably change uh, uh, when I use uh, uh, these lights quite often. Okay, this is my light. Uh, the old light I just um, switch off, so it's only one light in my scene. Okay, I switch off my um, photomatic web light, which was uh, still on for my former example. I choose my new light, I just turn it around with my angle snap tool uh, so it's uh, uh, 90 degrees and I just move it up to the ceiling of my room. 
the light already looks a little bit weird and what I can do, what I always should do is I should look at this light properly uh, with this uh, default with enhanced menu I go into lighting and in lighting you find something like a light assembly and in this menu light assembly you can go into assembly open okay uh, if you have the normal 3D Studio Max settings then you just go into edit you go into group and then in group you also find something like uh, uh, like uh, open assembly and if you did this I can choose my uh, my light and uh, what you see is that at the end of the day this is just completely normal um, uh, 3D Studio uh, photometric uh, light and there's one thing missing, missing. In distribution there is no photometric white light. So what you have to do is you have to go to this internet page of uh, Aircom and we already downloaded uh, these um, these uh, iDrop files but you also have to download your EAS files which you do right now. I just close this again, I go into my EAS data and I go to the same uh, same light and uh, also download this one. I go into my uh, download folder, I unzip um, this folder which uh, actually has the same name like my uh, e uh, like my iDrop files. Here we go and uh, what I have to do is I go again into 3D Studio Max and on Photometric Web I just choose my um, my file which I downloaded right now. I just went to my download folder, I just choose the same name like this one and uh, this light and I go into uh, this file and go into open. Here we go. And the last thing I would change, uh, should change, you should change from color uh, to, uh, to Kevin. This is uh, actually uh, a mistake uh, that it's still connected to this uh, 6500 uh, Kelvin uh, temperature you should always go to uh, this setting and if you did this then it already looks uh, looks really well if I go into my render preview and for example now change uh, uh, a white point like 4000 and go into render preview, preview then you can already see that the result already looks quite well and with this setting we just have a look at our visualization uh, this is our first uh, result. It already looks good, but it's not perfect and there are two things you could probably do. F the first thing I did is I just went into my Photometric Web again and in Shape Area I just went into Disk, uh, set up the radius so the radius uh, has the same dimension like my, my light and uh, I'll just change it in my top view so you can uh, see it a little bit uh, better. I went into light shape visible in rendering and uh, then the o result already looks much better. And there's probably one thing uh, if there are some weird reflections with your light you should put probably also do. If I just have this light you can just go into pick materials with my material uh, editor and I just choose this right now. And you can see that all my materials are standard materials. So if there are any weird reflections, then you have to change all these uh, materials to um, to mental ray materials, uh, which is a little bit of uh, work, I know, but uh, this is the only way of uh, avoiding weird uh, reflections, which most of the time don't uh, uh, actually don't happen. What you should do is after you set up everything, go into your uh, lighting again and assemble and just close your assembly so you're back to that you only have one setting and uh, if you don't use this enhancement you just go into uh, uh, I think objects or edit and into groups and just close uh, the assemble, uh, assembly over your group settings. I did a last visualization I just uh, used my um, iDrop file, my iDrop file where I already uh, loaded on top my ES file. I just copied it three times in my scene. I just uh, adjusted my um, exposure control and uh, this is the result of my visualization and I think this already looks uh, pretty good. Thanks for watching.